Today, I'm changing the brake pads on my JAG XJL. Here's the old, here's the new. Your indicator light goes off. You got a few days, jump on it. Now let's become familiar with what we're looking at. So here's your typical caliper, but where JAG is different, four total, they're all T55, top, bottom, in the middle. And pry without touching the, the actual rotor. And this is the front. Again, it just sits like this. And then you have the back, which as you see, it's sliding back and forth. Again, this little clip is the only thing that's holding this on right now. Same steps as always. Park your car on a level surface. Chalk the back tires, the emergency brake on, loosen the lug nuts, jack it up, take the tire off. I like to open the brake reservoir to release the pressure. The brake reservoir is right under this little clip. Unloosen it, and then I just sit it on top. This is a 19 millimeter socket, and I just loosen it up. All you wanna do is loosen them, leave them on, jack up the vehicle, and then we'll take them off. Again, you can use a jack that came with the Jag, but I use my floor jack. This is a three-ton floor jack, but I will put it in the same location. There's a variety of ways to secure your car once you jack it up. You can use wood or jack stands. Invest in some form of mat. I love this thing. I have a little extension on my ratchet. And then this is a Torx T55 and a semi-large screwdriver. That's pretty much all you're gonna need to do this, to do this entire job. And like I said, I will sit the tire under the car and I will lower the car onto the block of wood. Now let's become familiar with what we're looking at. So here's your typical caliper, but where JAG is different is this comes off in two pieces. There's just two T55 bolts that attach this bracket to the caliper and then this comes off. Here is the first T55 and then right here is the second. The top and bottom in your traditional spots on your caliper and then right here. So if you follow my fingers, one, two, three, four. You take these four out and then again, this comes off in two pieces and this particular piece is, I wouldn't say it's spring activated, it's more compression. Again, all you need is your T55. You might need a mallet to hit your ratchet so that it breaks that initial seal. Once you break that seal, that initial tightness comes off pretty easy. And you have two different size bolts. The two on the inside are these two big ones. And then the two that go on the top and the bottom are these small ones. Four total, they're all T55, top, bottom, in the middle. And pry without touching the, the actual rotor. Now, you can see how this is in two parts. Again, this little clip is the only thing that's holding this on right now. So, uh, obviously, be careful. And you just pop it off. And make a note of how that goes on, because that thing is a monster. It's a monster putting this back on, but it just goes under here, under here, and then that little piece slides in there. So set this to the side, and now this just comes off. So this part of the caliper is just in my hand. And this is the front. Again, it just sits like this. That comes off. And then you have the back, which as you see, it's sliding back and forth. And here is the actual brake sitting inside of the piston. And then your wear indicator is only on the driver's side. I don't have a wear indicator on this side. Your wear indicator is only on the driver's side. So you simply just push this back 
you can just push it off of these two pins. You push it off of those pins, set this out of the way, and here's the back brake pad. And then here's the front. Here's the front pad. These two guide pins right here is what the caliper slides on. So what I do is I clean these off. I just wipe them down and make sure they're shiny so that the caliper can slide back and forth. Here's the piston. And then I will depress the piston with a C-clamp. And that's the benefit of opening your reservoir so that it goes back in smoothly. This is just a four inch C-clamp. I take the brake pad and I put it back into the piston. It gives me something to mount to. Tighten it down. Get out the way. Take your pad out. You can line up. You can line up your caliper on those guide pins. You can line it up a little and then just drop your brake pad in there and bring it over and clamp it into place. I did forget to mention this. This is the passenger side. If I was doing the driver's side, that slot right there, that's where your brake indicator would go in. And you want to make sure that the brake indicator is pointing towards the rotor. This one, you do have hardware that sits right here onto the caliper. Personally, if my old hardware is still in good condition, I will leave it on because it's fit perfectly. Mine is. I'll clean that brake dust off a little. Then you simply just fit your new pads on. The new pads are in the front, the new pads are in the back. Then it's just back to putting the hardware on. I put the two big ones in first, and them up, then I hand tighten. After I hand tighten them, I come back and I tighten them with the T55 by hand. I come in with the ratchet and I tighten these down. And if you remember, these were on here pretty tight, so I do my best to really snug them up. I guess if you want, you could, uh, which I probably should do, but go and find the torque specs and then torque them to that. But these things were on here tight, so I just put them back on tight. So after I put on the top and bottom bolt, then the two middles, and I tightened it down tight, as you see, this is still pretty movie there. And that's because I have to put this piece back on. Now, this piece is a little, it's a little tricky. <laughs> it can go on, so you put it under one side. You put this piece. This is what it looks like up close, by the way. And then this is how it goes in. So this little notch will fit into this little notch. And these side pieces on either side go right up under the caliper. So you make sure you just get it in there as far as you can. And this clearly requires some gloves. So you push it under as far as you can. This is going to take some trial and effort. Push it under as far as you can. And you're going to pull this, this piece down with your hand like this. And while you're holding it, and then hopefully you'll get to a point to where you can just use a screwdriver and push it in. So I'm going to do my best to do this while you guys are watching me. See how long it takes me to struggle. I just got this piece in. 
and uh, I'm not gonna lie, this was a monster. What I had to do <laughs> was take the bottom, put it in there, hold my hand over this so it doesn't pop out. That retainer clip that I showed has to go in there. And then I used some real large channel locks to squeeze it down into place. So, as you see, the rotor can just turn very freely. And these pads were very thin. When your car tells you, hey, it's time to change the pads, you change the pads. So now the brakes are done. Everything is back on. All I have to do is bleed this side and then I'm done. Put the tire back on. The back of the caliper, just like pretty much every vehicle ever, here is the bleeder valve and this is a 10 millimeter. Here's the rubber boot that you put on top of the bleeder valve. Like I said, everyone is a pretty much a 10 millimeter. I moved my mat up under the caliper so when it does leak, it's easy to clean up. And then I have a towel. As soon as I will break it, it starts leaking. I put the towel over and I have someone pump the brakes down, up, down, up, down, hold. Then I tighten it, do that to both sides, and then we're done. Do I get a drip? There's a few drips going. Put the towel over it. Okay, go ahead. Tell me when you're holding. And that was all the way down and hold, right? Okay, go ahead and pump. All right. Thank you. Then I just put the little cap, put the cap back on, and uh, we're done. Now that I know that they're all on, I'll go ahead. Again, they're not even all the way tight, so I snug them down. Move everything out of the way. Lower the vehicle, tighten these down to specs. Then you wanna come back and inspect the reservoir. Make sure you have the proper amount of brake fluid. And this yellow piece of paper, if you don't have it, I'm gonna tell you what mine says. Dot four. So you need dot four brake fluid. Not dot three, dot four. You wanna make sure that your insert here is properly seated and that it everything is down and snug. Remember, brake pads are the only thing that stop your car. These things are pretty much the most important thing you can buy to make sure you don't hit someone. So you want to get the most expensive you can buy. Now you're all done, you change your brake pads, Give yourself a pat on the back because you just saved yourself a lot of time, a lot of money, and you did the work yourself, so you just feel good. So, what you wanna do after you get done bleeding and you've checked the lug nuts two, three, four times to make sure they're tight as you need, you just want to start the car, push in the brakes right there, make sure you're stopping, maybe back up or go forward a foot or two, make sure you're stopping, and then take it easy to just make sure your brakes are right until you're just uh, smashing down the street. <laughs> so right now I'm on my way tomorrow to a long road trip. So that's why I had to get new tires and change my brake pads. So uh, as usual, I appreciate you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll be sure to get back at you. Have a blessed day.